And to talk with us about stocks and the global economy is Justin Harper of IG Market Singapore. Good morning to you, Justin. Uh, investors are being sidelined by concerns about growth and its impact on corporate earnings as well as a, a long-running debt crisis in Europe. Are you bearish on stocks right now? Uh, I'm actually uh, probably more bullish on stocks when we look at the, the local economy. I think, you know, Singapore, the economy's held, uh, holding up well. The stock market just pushed through 3,000 this week. Uh, you know, some very strong companies here that pay good dividends and are resilient. So pretty bullish on Singapore. But when we look at, you know, Europe and the global picture, I think, you know, I'm probably more bearish on that. However, you know, we've seen the U.S. come in with some good earnings. So it's, it's a mixed bag, locally bullish uh, and sort of globally bearish, I think. So what can we expect uh, moving forward with uh, the US earnings season? Can we expect more disappointment amid sluggish global growth? I think so far, as we sort of kick in second week of the corporate earnings season for the U.S., uh, we're actually being uh, surprised on the you know, on the upside. We've got some good come, you know good figures coming out of some big heavyweights from the likes of Amex and uh, Credit Suisse, and uh, you know, and actually they're, they're doing well. So they're confounding the critics who thought that this was going to be a time where they would start to struggle and would really see the eurozone crisis and the slowdown in the economy sort of hit the U.S. But you know, so far actually we're being surprised by those figures, which will obviously confuse Ben Bernanke and the Fed. You know, when it comes to talking about more quantitative easing. Well, let's talk more about uh, the uh, slowdown in the US economy on account of uh, the Eurozone debt crisis. Is it clear that more easing by the Fed is actually on its way? I think that's what's keeping markets on a knife edge and keeping, you know, traders poised, you know, to come into the market on this hope that they will push this button and launch all of this cheap uh, US dollars into the economy. However, you know, he's, he's kept his cards very close to his chest. He did it again this week and last night. And there's no real clear indication of, of when this might happen. You know, we've got a lot of opportunities for it still to happen. But, you know, so far we're, we're none the wiser, really. But the markets are, are really keen, obviously, on this quantitative easing. And that's, that's obviously holding them up uh, during this downturn. But here's the question, can the Fed actually uh, save the economy and markets alone? I think sadly they can't they can't do it on their own they need help you know whether it's from other central banks from the European Central Bank from China from the PBOC you know it would need a concerted effort from all of the banks coming together you know if they feel that the economy is, is too sluggish at the moment we're seeing pockets of growth and corporate earnings coming in well so that's the dilemma it's a really mixed bag and it's very confusing to know should they actually uh, inject more fresh capital into the economy right now. Uh, and is the Fed ultimately uh, going to dilute the uh, value of the dollar that prints additional money in an effort to spur growth? I think, you know, that's, that's inevitable. Well, that, that will have to happen. They will have to see the uh, you know, dollar weakness. And we've seen the dollar strengthen and we've seen it weaken on every hope and every turn uh, with, with uh, the fact that you know, QE3 might be coming on or it might be held off there. So it's been a pretty volatile currency to trade. You know, the knock-on effect of the weaker dollar obviously is commodities that are priced in dollars, you know, oil and gold. They'll, they'll be cheaper so people could start you know, to pick up some of those assets. Uh, do you think China should shift its uh, monetary stance to moderately easy to arrest a, a slowdown in, in growth? I think China's a, you know, an interesting case. Last week it came out with its GDP for, for Q2, which came in at 7.6%, which you know, a lot of people were worried about that because it was below 8%, but it's still very, very healthy. The Chinese economy is doing well. There's still a lot of uh, investment, fixed in investment there, and uh, retail sales are doing well. So the China economy, I don't think there's any, any need to press the panic button there. There's no need to be uh, too scared about, about China at the moment. It's, it's ticking along nicely. Uh, so can China achieve a, a soft landing despite the slowdown in growth uh, seen in the second quarter? I think, you know, we, we all use the terminology soft and hard landing there and it, it you know, it, it oversimplifies a little bit because, you know, it's just not that simple with the Chinese economy and with the data that it produces and the analysts use. It's hard to get a real picture of what's happening within China and what stimulus is actually happening without they're actually uh, announcing anything there. So, you know, I think with China, you know, 7.6% 7, 7 growth in the global economy that's sluggish at the moment is, is pretty healthy and I don't think there's any need to worry about it. And China has the tools at its disposal. It can cut interest rates, it can push money into the economy as and when. So I think China is, uh, you know, is, there's no, no need to panic there. Uh, last question for you then. On Tuesday, the uh, Reserve Bank of Australia suggested no further interest rate cuts. So is that a good reason to hold the Aussie even uh, in light of a Chinese slowdown? Yeah, I think the Aussie is a pretty good currency to hold. It's, you know, it's quite volatile. If you can uh, you know, go long and short on the Aussie, it's a pretty good, uh, pretty good bet. It dipped below parity with the US dollar about a month or two ago, and now it's back up to something like 103. And it's yeah, very much uh, with no more interest rate cuts. People will want to be holding the Aussie. It's still very much tied to the Chinese economy and you know the, the commodity play. So you have to be wary of that. But yeah, as currencies go, it's you know it's a pretty resilient uh, play.
Okay, well, thank you very much indeed for that, Justin. That was Justin Harper of IG Markets Singapore. And that's a business wrap for me. Back over to Stephen Yvonne. All right, thanks a lot, Patrick. Okay. You ready to rock and roll? Always. Okay. Oh, so, what's your favorite song? <laughs> Would you like to share a song with us? Ah, oh, I can't think of the top of my head. Come on, I'm sure you know a song by The Police or by Sting. Uh, every breath <laughs> you take. Never heard of them. Never heard of them. <laughs> It's, it's, if, you, if you're not going to sing, he's going to sing. So please, save us. Some people like Steve singing. Why is it fun in this? Everyone's heard me sing before. It's not fun anymore. We're going to hear you sing. Get Patrick. Justin to sing next time he comes on. If he does it, will you do it? He, uh, yes, maybe I will. Maybe oh. I will. Not Justin. maybe, but you've got to be sure, because I'm going to give him a call after this. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll speak. We're putting you on line for that. But it is time to spin some tunes now. Rock and roll romance is what they call an American musical comedy. Uh, this movie, at least, is a story of a boy and a girl they meet while pursuing their Hollywood dreams. Mm. Want to hear Tom Cruise, Catherine Zeta-Jones and Russell Brand sing Well, It Happens here. Lynette Town has a review for the soundtrack for Rock of Ages.